Thank you so much for joining us at politicalstorm.com. We've got a special guest joining us right now. Peter Pitts is the president of the Center for Medicine in the Public Interest. He's a former FDA associate commissioner, and he's the author of Physician Disempowerment. Peter, how are you doing today, sir? Doing very well. How about yourself? Very, very good. We're excited to have you on the program, and I'm looking at an article that you had written here not too long ago. This was in the Philadelphia Inquirer, and it talks about this single payer health care, and you say it's unworkable, it's too costly. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, people say that um, for every complex problem is usually a simple solution, and it's usually wrong. And that's absolutely true when it comes to health care. If you listen to a lot of people talking about what solutions could be, and especially people uh, like Bernie Sanders who say, well, we need a single payer health care system where the government runs health care, uh, and they make it sound great, they make it sound like it is quote unquote free. But the bad news is that uh, nothing's for free. No. And the Bernie, San- the Bernie Sanders plan, for example, would cost, ready for this? Yeah. Almost $1.4 trillion a year. Wow. Now, regardless of what you think about uh, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, that's 10 times as much per year as Obamacare, $1.4 so trillion. Where in the world would that money come from? I know uh, we've seen an increase in insurance, you know, Personally, and many of the people that I know, they they saw their health care costs go through the roof. So where in the world would this additional funds, where would that come from? Well, gee, let me think about that for a minute. Where do you think it's going to come from? It's going to come from taxpayers. And, you know, it's funny. So Bernie Sanders is from Vermont. He's the senator from Vermont. Yeah. And the same the same exact plan uh, was legislated, was, or the governor of Vermont was trying to legislate this, almost this exact same plan. He abandoned it. He abandoned it. This was his, his quote. He said that the potential economic disruption risks would be too great to small businesses, working families, and the state's economy. And that's in Vermont. You know, Bernie Sanders, you know, ground zero. The governor says it's going to hurt, you know, small business and small taxpayers, working families. So it's, it's, it's outrageous that Senator Sanders would think that people are going to be naive enough to buy this you know, for the whole country have hospitals and doctors work directly, literally, to be paid for by the government, take choice out of the hands of doctors and patients. It's, you know, when you look at what's happening you know, in, in many countries in Europe, for example, they're actually moving towards a more market-based system, such as we have here, a hybrid system. You know, Bernie Sanders and people that talk about single-payer government systems like it's some great panacea that's free, you know, we're absolutely selling snake oil to the American public. It's, uh, it's shameless. So it, I guess it kind of goes back to what, you know, Grandma said, uh, nothing in life is free, son. No, sure not. And, you know, it's just like with Obamacare. People thought, well, it's it's free. It's it's universal. And now all of a sudden people who have you know, many Obamacare policies are walking to their pharmacies and finding that their co-pays have gone up radically, that their doctors can't prescribe them the medicines that they could before. Obviously, you know, we all know about the canceled health care policies, you know, the devil really is in the detail, and to my mind, you know, allowing states to experiment on new ways to provide health insurance is certainly a, a great way to go. You know, but you know, the people that are running for president, certainly on the Democratic side, both Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders, feel that the problem with Obamacare isn't that there is too much government involvement, but rather that there's too much, and that is a real significant philosophical difference, I think, between on the one side and the other. I personally believe that if you allow the free market to work with government, you get big things, such as the Part D drug benefit, where the government and private industry have significantly expanded coverage and, re- and reduced costs and with extremely high uh, you know, user satisfaction. You know, that's really where you want to go. You know, Getting more power to Uncle Sam, taking power away from the state, taking power away from doctors and pharmacists and patients, wrong way to go. Again, our guest today, Peter Pitts. He's the president of the Center for Medicine in the Public Interest, also a former FDA associate commissioner and the author of the book Physician Disempowerment. Now, Peter, we've talked a little bit about Bernie's plan for health care and that it's not necessarily a plan that is going to be a real stable and realistic plan. As you look at people on the other side of the aisle, on the on the Republican side, are there any candidates there that, that you're hearing plans from them about health care that sound interesting? Well, unfortunately, the, the plan on the Republican side that I like the best was from Governor Bush. So he's not in the race anymore. Uh, Donald Trump has some pretty ludicrous ideas in his, not the least of which is 
solving the problem through drugs from Canada, which never makes any sense. And also, you know, the state is going to lower drug spending by more than we actually spend on it, it now. You know, but his concept is, and Secretary Clinton too, is that the government should negotiate harder for drug prices. But when you look at study after study after study by the government and the private sector, government negotiation not only doesn't reduce cost, it actually results in uh, smaller options for patients. I think the VA is a good example of that. So I think right now, unfortunately, there's no real good solid plan that I like. On either side. Uh, so on either side. But, you know, it's, it's, it's early days yet. And as, you, as I said earlier, there's no simple way to, quote, unquote, solve the problem. It, it's iterative. It's going to take time and, and negotiation. Like, for example, in the Affordable Care Act, there are a lot of things that I like and a lot of things that I don't. So it's going to it, uh, it's going to have to be a compromise between the executive and Congress, and it's going to take it's going to take a long time. Unfortunately, there's no there's no easy answer to this question. Just you know, just my my one caveat would be anybody that's promising you a quick free solution is absolutely selling you a bill of goods. Definitely. Again, Peter Pitts is our guest right now. Now you were mentioning uh, that. Governor Bush, Jeb Bush, had a plan that you kind of liked. What was it about his plan that you liked? And do you think maybe one of the other candidates, if they become the nominee, could adopt something like that? What was it about the plan, first of all, that you liked? What I liked about the plan is that it really focused on allowing the free market to work with government and with doctors and with patients to let the system evolve as they see fit, to experiment on on the state level, to give the FDA, for example, the authority to fast-track life-saving drugs to market and do more, uh, you know, oversight once they're already on the market. So it was, it, I think it was more pragmatic dealing with what's happening now and making it better uh, rather than saying, let's throw everything out the window and start from scratch, but specifically, you know, realizing that the free market really not only is where innovation comes from, for pharmaceuticals, for medical devices, things like that, but it's where innovation relative to access systems come into play as well for paying for things that work rather than for paying for things that are least expensive and allowing patients to fail their way to more expensive therapies, which just doesn't save any money and is pretty pretty bad for patients. Very true. So it, it, was, it, was a, it, it was as much a philosophical statement as it was a, a, a line-by-line roadmap to success. Well, and, and one of the things that would be, you know, I guess – I kind of, with this whole election cycle this year, I've been kind of crossing my fingers and just hoping some things will come through, and and maybe we'll still see uh, a person that does get, we don't know who the nominee is going to be yet, but maybe we'll see that person who, when they do become the nominee, uh, adopt some ideas from people. Because I don't think that Bush didn't make it because of that plan. So if that was something that was a good idea that he had, it's not like people said, well, we don't want him because of that reason. So maybe some of the good ideas from the other candidates will still filter way through to the end. That would be fantastic. No, I think you're exactly right, and I think that will happen. You know, the only thing that I fear, and it's, I suppose it's kind of inevitable, is that during the election season, both candidates will start you know, throwing out these very simple soundbite solutions, looking for black hats and white hats, which is not helpful, because at the end of the day, to solve this problem, Everybody who's involved needs to be part of the solution. And so looking for easy solutions or looking for people to blame, you know, it's good, it's good sound bites to get you headlines, you know, maybe even get your votes, but it certainly doesn't uh, move, move the debate forward in a thoughtful way. Exactly. Again, our guest today, Peter Pitts, president of the Center for Medicine in the Public Interest, also a former FDA administration associate commissioner and the author of Physician Disempowerment. Peter, where can we find a copy of that book? Thanks for asking. It's on Amazon, obviously, or you can also log on to our website, which is cmpi.org. It's available there for sale, but also on PDF files for free because we want to get the word out as broadly as possible. Very nice. So if I want to read it online, I can read it for free. You can read it online. You can download it and print it out and share it with your friends. Absolutely. That's awesome. That is such a cool thing. Well, uh, again, the website, CMPI for Center for Medicine and the Public Interest, cmpi.org, and it's also available on Amazon. So if you want to buy the hardcover, you can do that as well. Peter, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us today, sir. My pleasure. And again, I'd love to talk to you anytime you want. Well, we'll certainly be reaching out between now and the end of the election season, I'm sure. Well, good, good luck, and you know, an, an educated voter is the best way forward. I, I agree 100%. That's why we enjoy reaching out and talking to people that know way more about this stuff than I do, and, and uh, you, you certainly fit the bill for the medical side. So thank you again for being our guest today. My pleasure. Thank you. Again, Peter Pitts, president of the Center for Medicine and the Public Interest, 
Uh, also a former FDA administration associate commissioner and the author of Physician Disempowerment. You can find that on Amazon, and you can also find a copy at no charge on his website. Uh, and the website is cmpi.org. That's C M. P-I.org. Thanks again for joining us at politicalstorm.com. The preceding broadcast you just heard has been executive produced by Lawrence Rasson, co-founder of politicalstorm.com. Line produced, edited, and narrated by John Small from the John and Heidi Show and Sunny Radio. This program is expressly for politicalstorm.com and its affiliated networks. For politicalstorm.com, I'm John Small.